evening. I am Ben Licata, and welcome to Off the Map Live. We are a bi-weekly interview show. We talk to some of the greats and uh, newcomers to the tattoo uh, industry. Tonight we've got a great show for you. We've got Paul Booth, Hannah Aitchison, and if you stick around a little later, we're going to be talking with someone new to the game, Soren Gabor. Uh, last week's show we had Brian Geckel and Jeff Norton. Uh, you can check that out on our podcast. Um, we have a video podcast available on the uh, App Store, and you can also check it out on our YouTube channel. If you watch either one of those, please like and comment and sign up and subscribe, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we want to hear what you have to say, and we will you know, make changes uh, based on your suggestions. So tonight's show is brought to you by Waterloo, uh, Waterloo Artist Series Workstations. These guys are great. If you haven't seen them yet, they've got an all new series of artist series workstations with stainless steel tops and more accessories than you can count. Check them out. Neotat, rotary tattoo machines. Some of the most solid rotary tattoo machines out there. And Artisan, tattoo cleanser and aftercare. So, tonight's show is going to be fun. I'm a little nervous, I have to admit. Uh, I've never spoken with Paul Booth before, except for a little earlier today. Um, I'm kind of a big fan. Uh, it's going to be a great show. Hopefully, um, my questions will be good. If you guys have any questions, write into the chat room right there beside your screen, and uh, I'll ask them, and you'll get your answers directly from the artists. So, after this video, we'll be back with Paul Booth. I'm Ben. And I'm Brian. We're from Tattoo Now. We're here to tell you about the Tattoo Now Professional Tattoo Artist Sweepstakes and Contest. It's going to be insane! 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 We're giving away tons of prizes like a Waterloo Artist Series workstation loaded with quality supplies from every nook and cranny of the tattoo world with rotary machines from Neotat, Artisan Tattoo Cleanser and Aftercare, ink sets from Eternal Tattoo Supply, tickets for the Worldwide Tattoo Conference and the Paradise Artist Retreat, free webinars from Tattoo Now TV and Off the Map Live, books and DVDs from Tattoo Education, Armrest, lamp, medium travel case, art supply sets, and more from Kingpin oh, Tattoo Supply. Get... These prizes are so cheap, it's like we're giving them away! We are giving them away, Brian. We are giving them away. We're giving them away. Needles from Needle Jig, foot switches from Devil's Right Hand, True Tubes, Hustle Butter, magazines and subscriptions from Tattoo Artist Magazine, postcards and business cards from Lucky Design Media, book sets from Presto Art, Ergo Tube from Pulse Tattoo Supply, coil machines, and a Soba Custom from Workhorse Irons, an artist chair from Tat Soul, a Days Tattoo plus travel from GuyAgison.com and a vacation getaway. If you're a professional tattoo artist, you need to sign up for the sweepstakes. Sponsored by Paradise Artist Retreat, Tattoo Now, Off the Map Live, Neotat, Eternal, Waterloo, Artisan, Kingpin, and Tattoo Education. Starting in February and ending in July, we're going to be selecting an artist at the end of each month on Off the Map Live. Do you have people up in your kitchen? Do you like to tattoo people in a bathtub? Have you seen horrible infections from your work? This contest is not for you. So Brian, how can we find out more information about this sweepstakes? Go to tattoonow.com forward slash sweepstakes. Fill out the form for your chance to win. Professional tattoo artists only. Only. Hey, we are back with uh, the legendary Paul Booth. Paul, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks a lot, man. So I was just listening to a little bit of your background music during that last video. What have you got going on in there? Oh, um, let's see. Well, uh, I got an album coming out in a few months. Uh, dark ambient stuff. It's kind of meant for artists. Uh, meditation kind of shit. Um, I basically make music while I paint, so. Oh, right on. Yeah. So, um... Do you play instruments on this album? Did you do the whole thing yourself? Yeah, it's all me. It's uh, keyboards and digital synths, and you know, kind of a hobbyist, I guess. <laughs> do you uh, do you put like samples in there? It sounds like rain or like dragging of some sort. What? What's... Um, I use if there's any samples I use, it's usually something like babies crying <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. You know? Nice and soothing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, is that the kind of stuff you listen to while you're tattooing? Yeah, I don't really listen to a lot of stuff with lyrics. I uh, I like to zone out, so uh, I basically listen to a lot of dark ambient music when I work. Helps, so yeah, you know, create. Uh, you've been tattooing for quite a long time, over twenty years, right? Twenty five years. Twenty five years. Did you think twenty five years ago that you would be where you are now? 
I never really thought about it. I just tried to keep up with things. I, um, it's been an exciting road, um, but I never really had a plan. I just kind of did my thing and uh, um, went with the flow, you know. Uh, I had a feeling I'd still be tattooing in 25 years, but, you know, I didn't know any of the other stuff. So... How did, uh, how did you first uh, get into tattooing? Um, not a very exciting story, really. I uh, got my daughter's name tattooed on me and kind of uh, needed to know how to do it. I was really intrigued by the process, and uh, I uh, got an apprenticeship back in the day and uh, just started tattooing and, you know, spent three years doing traditional stuff, Tasmanian devils and hearts and roses and stuff like that. Nice. And out into my own um, and started freehandish kind of stuff. Um, that's about it, really. Did you have a pretty typical uh, old school apprenticeship? Oh, yeah. I cut acetate stencils and mixed color and pigment and made needles and mopped the floors and emptied the ashtrays and all that stuff. What are some of the differences that you've noticed from, you know, apprenticeship 25 years ago to some of what you see going on these days um are there even apprenticeships anymore i don't really know <laughs> <laughs> um well there's obviously more kids coming out of art school and uh getting into tattooing which is pretty cool a lot of talent now that i, I wasn't around then um it's pretty exciting to see the the evolution of the craft do you think there's anything missing um in the way kids are learning these days? Um, I wonder about ethics sometimes. Uh, doing a tattoo that's going to look good in 10 or 15 years, or at least uh, making that a goal. Uh -huh. um, I see some amazing stuff, uh, don't get me wrong. Some of it, I think, is not going to stand the test of time, but some of it, I think, is an excellent, um, like as, as I said, an evolution. So, but you know, it's always been that way. It's just a higher grade of that way. Uh, uh, there's definitely a lot more going on now. I think that, um, I'm not sure, there's not a lot of tattoo history anymore. A lot of these kids don't know the past and who came before them and, and what they were doing uh, back in the day, you know, the old timers and, and that sort of thing. A lot of innovators that are unheard of these days. Some people would say that you're an innovator yourself, and uh, I would say just about every tattooer I've ever spoken with knows exactly who you are. So, oh. <laughs> so it's still out there. There you know. There's still, yeah. still sense of tradition there. Um, have you ever had an apprentice yourself? Um, I had two that never really made it. <laughs> um, I. Um, you a little too hard on them. Yeah, I guess so. Making them clean the toilet with their tongue and stuff. <laughs> um, no, I actually, um, I, I have, it's hard to devote the time to an apprenticeship, you know. From a teacher's point of view, it, it's kind of difficult to um, uh, really devote the time necessary to create the monster that you're looking to create as a teacher, you know. Uh -huh. um, so I kind of back off these days. Plus, I've been burned in the past and kind of gun shy. So, well, I, you've uh, you've seemed to uh, recently, at least, that I've, in the last few years, surround yourself with some really great artists at Last Rites. Oh yeah, I've oh, I've always had strong crews. Yeah, you know, I'm real real proud of the people. We got some new guys coming on soon. I'll be announcing in the near future, so I'm pretty excited. So, who's at your shop now? Uh, I've got Logan Aguilar. He's a local artist here in New York. Um, and uh, Stefano's here when he's in town, um, but that's about one week every month or two, really. I know, um, I know he's been painting a lot. Yeah, he's been painting his ass off for, for a show here, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're all excited about that. Um, Coming up on July 12th. Yeah. I will, I'll be there. Cool, cool, excellent. Uh, I know Jose Perez is with you uh, part-time, too, sometimes, yeah. right? Jose, um, I, I, I never really did part-time guys before, but uh, I had these guys like Jose that want to come out like one week every month and hang out and tattoo and um, 
So I, you know, I kind of said, let's do it. You know, why not? No big deal. I got the extra chair. So and it's nice to have uh, a revolving talent coming through the place. So you've recently moved in a new space? Yeah, we've been here about three months now at our new location. It's uh, three floors, got a big spiral staircase between the three of them, and we've got the art gallery, of course, on the street level, and then the basement is the uh, tattoo crypt. <laughs> and, uh, upstairs is a mezzanine, and my office is up there where I tattoo. Um, so we have a lot of fun here. We're getting a lot of positive attention, a lot of walk-in traffic. The old place was... Uh, kind of up on the third floor on a desolate street and you know you had to know us to find us and that was fun for a while but the gallery needs a stronger presence to really expose the art to people so, what uh, what led you to, to want to open a gallery in the first place actually as a tattooer um, it really started for me as I would walk into galleries in New York in my early days and I'd want to buy art, but I'd be treated like shit because I didn't look like a buyer, you know? And I never found a gallery. Well, there were a few, but it was hard finding a gallery where people would uh, just be nice, you know? And that kind of pissed me off. That and, uh, well, not these days, certainly, but back in that day, uh, the minute anyone in the art world heard you were a tattooer, they didn't want to know anything about you. They didn't consider you an artist. Um, you know, we were kind of a joke back in the day. Um, and that infuriated me too, because being an only child, I kind of uh, uh, hate to be told no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I decided, yeah, I'm gonna open a gallery someday and it's gonna be more of a family environment where there's no need to be pretentious. And uh, uh, it's kind of a community for like-minded individuals you know that appreciate dark art and what we're all about so it's been uh it's been working out well a lot of our fans and friends really appreciate our approach and uh we're turning a lot of people onto new forms of art in the, within the genre that we're in i think it's great you know you're not going you, it, a gallery like yours you can, i can go see things that are that i'm really interested in as opposed to some of the contemporary art galleries i've been into where it's just I don't know, whitewashed, plain. I don't, you know, I don't get it. It's just, yeah, yeah you know. I, I find that darker art, like what we show, has a lot more substance to it. You know, it has more emotion packed into it because it's coming from the, a lot of times, the darker side of the artist's psyche, you know, and, uh, and they're exploring their depths. And it's cool to give them a showcase, you know. So, You've done some pretty uh, some pretty cool conventions in the past. You produced a few. Do you have any uh, any Back plans to ever do them again? Um, actually, I'm considering it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh, I have a big production company. We've been I'm friends with that. We've been talking with each other about the idea. I'm not going to say it's definitely going to happen, nor am, am I going to say it won't. Honestly, the only way I'd do it again is if I had a strong production team, because. Uh, those days were hell. <laughs> Spreadsheets and, and, and politics and bullshit and, uh, you know, none of that stuff really uh, exists so much anymore. So uh, there's a lot more freedom to make it what you want, you know. So you may see a show for me in the next year or two, if not. That would be know. amazing if we, if we could, that's for sure. Um. How about traveling on your own, other shows yourself? Uh, you do much of that at all? I'm not doing as much traveling as I used to. I'm kind of a homebody now. I uh, work on larger projects at home, tattooing and painting. Um, I still tattoo, even though people don't believe that. I just don't <laughs> post like I should, really. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I really, uh, I don't know. I, you know, I, 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 I enjoy being here painting and that sort of thing, making my music, whatever it is I'm doing. Traveling's got, you know, I spent the better part of 20 years traveling the world, you know, and, and, and it was awesome. I've seen a lot and I'm very fortunate. But these days it's like going on tour with a band and sleeping in a bunk on a bus, you know, I'm too right. old fat for that. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, um, I do maybe three or four shows a year now. 
Um, Stefano has got a show coming up uh, in uh, in partnership with Inked Magazine in uh, in June. You're going to be there. Yeah, I'll be there for sure. Looking forward to it. You're going to be tattooing. Yeah, I uh, I might paint too. I don't know. It's oh. kind of a, it's a home show for me. It's obviously local, so um, um, I got. I know I got a tattoo to do on Friday. I haven't really booked Saturday because I'm thinking about just sitting there and painting, you know. I don't know why I have that in my head, but um, I feel like doing something a little different, you know. I um, think that would be cool, man. <laughs> so, but who knows? I may, I just don't know. I don't really have a plan. And we're going to talk again uh, at the expo on yeah. stage. Yeah, cool. Have you done uh, many live interviews on stage before? Uh, I think two. Yeah. Um, I'm not great in front of large groups of people, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> we can just we can just pretend it's me and you. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you did a show at the Giger Museum. Uh, yeah, I did uh, a few years back. Uh, I had um, that was my first solo in ten years, I think. I don't do a lot of a lot of gallery shows. I should, but. I never know if I'm going to have enough time to paint a whole show. So that one, obviously, when I got asked, uh, when, when Giger asked me to uh, to show, I, how could I say no? I mean, the, the very uh, honored to uh, be able to do that. So I painted my ass off for for six months. You know, I didn't have a lot of lead time. Usually, you need about a year to put a show together, but um, we made it more of a a little bit of a retrospective of my older work as well so I was able to put a balance in between stuff I did 10 12 years ago up until recent stuff and new stuff I think I painted like six new pieces for that show and went over really well we had uh, we kind of overran the little village with people dressed in black <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah it was uh, a lot of great support and a great experience. Do you have any documentation of that? Is there any video out there? Or? You know, I got some video shot that I keep talking about editing together and um, one of my projects that just isn't on the top of the, the uh, heap yet. Yeah, you got, you got a lot of projects going on right now? Yeah, well I just finished the, the music is getting mixed now and mastered um, so that's done. Uh, we just uh, started a new community and a website and uh, kind of trying to get that rolling, but it's new, so, you know, it's pretty fresh. And um, um, a few other projects I can't really mention yet. Sure, I understand. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, but uh, but there's always something going on here. So when, you're, uh, when your music's done, where can we get it? Uh, well... It's getting shopped to distributors right now, so with any luck, it'll be on the shelves. We'd like to have a Halloween release for it. Uh, how uh, appropriate. I got a, a good buddy of mine is a, uh, what would you call it? Um, he uh, does all the label services and that sort of thing. You know, basically everything a label does, but I don't have any interest in signing with a label. And my music is so... Uh, hard to place that I don't know you know it doesn't fit into any real categories so it doesn't really uh, it's not something that's going to be on the billboards anytime soon <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, so you mentioned a new website oh yeah lastrights.tv that's uh, we got uh, we put everything together in one site our gallery and a tattoo studio and a community built for like minded people that appreciate dark art and um so when you say community do you have is there a forum yeah it's kind of like a dark facebook really and <laughs> yeah, uh profiles and all that you know um it, it imitates facebook a lot you know uh but now that we've got it launched i want to take it in new directions i'm not looking to be facebook by any means you know but uh i think it'd be cool to have a place that can do what facebook does but for people that are more on the same page, you know, more of a of a private group. Not necessarily private, but, you know. Not trying to post everything about themselves every minute of every day. Right, right, right exactly. Yeah. You know, something more about 
art, both tattooing and fine art, and um, uh, something that uh, you're going to meet more people there that, that are into the same things you are, you know. So that's what it's always been about. And, um, you know, hopefully it'll take off. If not, it's cool, you know. But <laughs> at this day and age, I don't know how online communities really survive with crap like Facebook out there. But, uh, you know, it's changing so quickly. Who knows what happens next? I think it just kind of all breaks up into different smaller communities, you know. Everyone kind of finds their niche and just smaller. So you've been doing darker art for... I mean, as long as, you know, forever. Uh, are you still inspired by the same things that inspired you early on? And uh, what keeps you excited? Um, uh, well, I would say my contempt for mankind. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, uh, I'm inspired by all the fucked up shit I see out in the world, you know. Uh, I'm not, I'm inspired by the disturbing things, you know, the, the, that, uh inspiration doesn't necessarily have to come from a positive place you know um inspiration can come from anything and i avoid the news because uh it just infuriates me most of the time um but um i, I get inspiration from art of course i mean we have a gallery where i have new art in here every month and walking through it and, and, and always seeing this new art coming through here is majorly inspiring, you know. Um, so that's a lot of fun. That's uh, probably another reason I opened a gallery, so that I could be around so much more of it, you know. Um, and uh, meet a lot of new artists that way, and you know, through the gallery. So, you know, it's been very, very beneficial for me as inspiration goes. So Bob Tyrell credits you a lot with uh, kind of getting him in the, in the direction of what he does. Do you remember the early days of tattooing Bob? Oh yeah, yeah. I remember uh, two and a half days sitting, sat like a rock. That was before he was tattooing. I did his back and um, um, I think I think his back and his sleeve. Or when I did his sleeve, he was just getting into it. You know. Um, was he still the guy that he is now then? Um, he's a bit crazier now. Still the nice guy he always was. Um, he, uh, uh, yeah, he was always, I think he was a cabinet maker or something. He was a countertop maker. Countertop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he played in a band. That's right. He, he, so, had, he still had dreams of being, a, a, you know, like a... A metal rock star back then. Yeah. Yeah. He plays guitar like a motherfucker, so... He sure does. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been fortunate enough to get to play with him. Uh, I played on stage <laughs> with him at Hell City. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I've never seen that live. I look forward to one of these days. I want to get to it's Hell a trip. City these days. But, uh... Well, make sure you go to Columbus, because it's fucking hot in Phoenix, man. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Phoenix, Phoenix in August? Oh, wow, yeah. When you wear all black, <laughs> yeah. it gets hot. But there's a lot of pools. Keep it cool. Well, I really appreciate you talking with us. Um, it's been really good talking with you, man. All right. Thanks a lot for calling, man. And I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to talking with you uh, in June at the uh, Empire State Tattoo Expo. Cool. Excellent. Look forward to it. And uh, we'll talk more then. Okay, man. Take Thanks. care. Thank you. Bye. My name is Bob Tyrell. I started tattooing in 1997. I specialize in black and gray, mostly photorealism and portraits. People think I've been tattooing forever because I'm old. I think when I started, it was the perfect time for me. I got to learn from Tom Renshaw, doing the best portraits in the world. So I'm out here at Off the Map Tattoo in East Hampton, Massachusetts, to visit my friends, to tattoo, and also to film a DVD. I'm tattooing a friend of mine, Chris, drummer for the band Jenna Tortures, uh, doing a portrait of Frankenstein. I'm a huge horror fan uh, since I was about five years old, or as long as I can remember. Um, so I love doing anything horror related. And as I'm tattooing, I'm gonna be just talking my way through it and um, explaining what I'm doing as I'm doing it. How I approach a portrait, how I make the stencil, how I mix my inks, and just any, anything to do with technique I'll be talking about. There's no right or wrong way to tattoo. There's a lot of different techniques that people use, and, um, but this is just the way I tattoo. 
live in a black and white world. That's why I do what I do, I guess. And we're here with Hannah Aitchison. Hello. Hi, Hannah. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How about you guys? We're doing really good. Last time I saw you was at the Paradise Artist Retreat. I know. That was so fun. Oh, man. But today the weather was almost as nice. I say almost. It was pretty nice here. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty stellar. Yeah. Was, you know, there was no sage being blown through or pan flutes or spa water, but... Yeah, or ponies. It was, ponies. Right. But... It wasn't bad. I'm not going to complain. I did go to Iron Pump. I bought you, a bunch of bike gear today. That was pretty great. You bought what? I bought a bunch of bike gear today. That was really great. What kind Iron. of bike gear? Oh, a motorcycle gear. What do you got? Uh, stuff like that. So. What do you have for a bike? Oh, I don't have a bike. I, I see. Nice. I have to go get myself another one. So it's been, it's been a few years, but uh, I, uh, I ride with my feller. And, uh, right got, on. So did you get full of leathers? No. <laughs> I, I take it seriously. I've got the safety yellow and, you know, the... the oh, I see. Stuff. Yeah. It's not like, not biker stuff, motorcyclist things. Motorcyclist. I understand. <laughs> I want to be seen before they hit me, so... I guess that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> anyway, what's new with you? Wow, where do I start? All kinds of good stuff. Um... I am now located in the beautiful city of Pittsburgh. So what, what made that move? Why, why did you move to Pittsburgh? Good, fresh start. This is a really, really great town. It's um, it's kind of coming up from uh, a city that's been left behind uh, with a decline of the industrial, American industrial age, to a city that's reinventing itself um, with a bunch of young, creative people. And it's a great time to move in here. It's a great time to be a part of this community. People are, are really active. They're really lively. It's a very engaged community. Everybody seems to know each other. There are a lot of great tattoo shops here. Um, there are a lot of people here that, um, like, well, like Mike Skyver, very close. You know, everybody knows Mike. Um, there's some wonderful artists just right down the street from me. I've made so many great friends already. This has been just an incredibly positive experience to be here. And I don't think I could have picked a better place to try. Do you still have the place uh, in Chicago? Did you did you shut it down? Uh, that was not my place. Oh, I see. So, yeah, I was working with my friend Ben and uh, Benoit, infamous Benoit. Uh, ben still has Deluxe Tattoo, and he has very generously offered to let me go there uh, as often as I care to, and I can work with my Chicago clients there. Right now, though, I am trying to direct all my new business traffic to Pittsburgh because this really is my own place, and I can. I can kind of invent uh, the workspace the way that I'd like to work, and, and it's been a really good experience. So it's a tattoo shop and also a curiosity shop. Can you tell us a little bit about the place? Yeah. yeah. So so anyway, it's uh, still under development because this is an ever-ending process. Everybody who has a shop knows how this rolls. Um, but uh, yeah, the it's a huge um, converted ice warehouse that was built in I think 1910. And uh, I've got this massive space that's divided into little subspaces. It's all this great exposed brick, this big industrial open space. The front part of it is all going to be curiosities and antiques and weirdness and a gallery area. And then the back part of that shop is where the tattooing takes place. And uh, it's a really wonderful space, very open. And then the other side, we have... Uh, mechanics and sculpting and you know a lot of metal work and things like that it's gonna be a little bit more separate 
Um, but I'm hoping to have it be a place where kind of like a community center where we can host drawing workshops for other artists, maybe have post gallery events. Um, I'd love to host some figure drawing classes for people who might be interested. Um, there are a lot of wonderful breweries nearby and bakeries and artisanal whiskey distillers. And I'd love to be able to do food and drink events kind of coupled with art events and uh, just have it be something that kind of branches out into other aspects of what we all love. Sounds, this... sounds amazing. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm overly ambitious, but I figure, you know, it's better to reach and fall on my butt than uh, just sit on the ground and wait for things to come to me. So. so where do you find the time to tattoo? I know you're a very busy person. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sort of sad. All of, all of my friends that know me and know how I feel right now are all listening to the same litany of, of issues is that I feel like I'm kind of doing everything sort of half-assed right now because I'm doing it by myself. I don't have an assistant yet. Um, I need to find somebody that can aid and abet in this whole process. So um, I try to dedicate a, a very uh, flexible yet set schedule during the week. Like X number of days are dedicated to tattooing and X number of days are dedicated to business development. And uh, I get the weekends to either you know, take care of domestic stuff because frankly we all need to do our laundry um, but <laughs> everything i haven't else, figured out how to do that yet but yeah, right that you have a very lovely wife so <laughs> um anyway uh yeah that's kind of how i'm trying to roll is, is to sort of partition it out into tattooing days and and say web development days or um space building days and uh, so that the space is coming along slower than i would like but I think it's human nature to want everything to be wonderful and perfect immediately, but that loses sight of the process that makes it so much better. You know, the process but, is part of what makes things cool. If someone is looking to get an appointment with you, what is the best way to go about it? Well, I would say go to my website, but my website's not up yet. Oh, sorry. I know. I, I, as soon as it's done, I'm sending it to Brian, and he's going to optimize everything and make it wonderful. Um, <laughs> I'm so, it's like it's so it looks really good I'm really happy with it so far but uh, it's just because I love to learn things I've been kind of teaching myself stuff as I go um, anyway uh, <laughs> the best way to do it is probably still the same old email that I've always had um, my personal email my gmail account which uh, it's uh, the baby hsn at gmail.com don't send any spam anybody out there. No, no spam, please, for the love of God. I get enough of that. But put something really enticing in the title of the email, and I would be <laughs> much more likely to answer it as opposed to looking to get tattoos of baby footprints or something like that. Put something like, you know, I have uh, I have the Ark of the Covenant in my basement. And you know, <laughs> I'd be more likely to answer it. Right. So you, you must get tons of email. Like, yeah, yeah, I get a lot. And unfortunately, I, I like to answer it all myself. Um, I think it's more personal. Ultimately, I think I'm going to have to kind of foist it off on some poor unsuspecting um, minion at some point. But um, I know it's a little easier if you have someone to filter it first, and then they can kind of send you the send you the, the ones that you need to answer and yeah, save the infinity symbols for somebody else. It is. It's nice to have somebody who knows who knows what you like and knows what your schedule is like and knows what you'll respond to and what will be a good match for what you're looking to do. And, um, then they can send it along to So I have to ask, are you still doing the TV stuff? Uh, as of right now, Best Inc. is, I suspect, done. I think that the network is, the, the rumors that I'm hearing, the scuttlebutt that I'm hearing is that the the network is, is changing direction and that they're not interested in focusing on tattoo related television anymore, which I think is sad because I actually was, you know, as far as tattoo shows go, I didn't hate it. I wasn't embarrassed to be associated with it. Um, and there was a lot of great stuff that happened off camera. We got a lot of chances to, to mentor and help these artists develop a little bit or offer our suggestions wherever we could. And a lot of them are just tremendously receptive and they have so much so much talent and it's really exciting to be a part of that and to see what they're what they're coming up with so many young aspiring artists or developing artists are just blowing me away every day so. i know that show was definitely a less dramatic 
a lot less, a lot less drama than some of the other ones, and I appreciated it for that for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, think I mean, you know, Joey was on the show, so I mean that there's an inherent amount of drama. But <laughs> oh, it's so it's so sad because Joe is like he he is one of the gentlest, nicest, most sincere people you'll ever meet. But he does he has this intensity because he's very he's very like balls out about everything he does, and so to capture that. Uh, makes him look a certain way if that's all you capture and you know anytime that there was something coming up you know they they liked kind of trying to capture that edginess because it made a nice counterpoint to you know soft girls up there going oh my god oh, oh, you know so uh it gets to the point where he kind of was getting his clients were coming in and they were nervous about talking to him because they were assuming he was this badass who was just going to you know, denigrate them the entire time they're getting tattooed and you know, they'd get their tattoo session and they'd be like, I am so relieved. You were so nice. Oh my God. I was terrified about getting tattooed. He was like, what is this show doing in my reputation? So, I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure people knew he was kind of grumpy anyway, but uh, you know, when, when he's passionate about something and he's trying to really mean what he says, he just looks pissed, even if he's not pissed, you know? That's that's exactly it. He's just very, he's super sincere. He never says something he doesn't mean. And that's one of the reasons I love him. He's just, he's just absolutely like passionate and sincere about everything. So that's great. So we've got a chat room going right now and I've got a question from the chat room for you. Cool. Fire it's, away. It says, uh, how do you balance the creative aspects of tattooing with the more rigid red tape of owning a small business? That is an eternal juggling act. And um, yeah, I, I think the thing is the framework Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll fall back on a quote from Marcel Proust, who said, uh, be regular and ordinary in your life so that you may be violent and dangerous in the work. And no one will ever accuse tattooists of being violent or dangerous, maybe no one I know. Uh, but I think what he's getting at is that by establishing a framework and a structure to work within, you can be as crazy as you want to be within that structure, and it allows you a lot of freedom to have that structure. It's like being your own parent, um, but it is difficult to create that structure. Um, essentially, it, it took me a while of, when I first incorporated my business to uh, determine the things that made me feel safe and made me feel like certain things were always taken care of. Um, so figuring out how to minimize the amount of things you have to worry about at the outset and have as many things in place as possible that's the thing that you have to really kind of dedicate your time to at the outset when you're getting your business set up so that there are fewer things that just pop up unexpectedly because everything's kind of anticipated. Um, things like your taxes. Everybody's got an issue with their taxes. I incorporated. I put myself on payroll. Taxes, done. Guess what? It's, it's, a, it's, it's more expensive, yes, but is my peace of mind and my time worth that money? Absolutely. Not only that, but like audit, non-existent. So, you know, everything's there. Um, certain things like bill payments are all automated, rent payments are all automated. I don't have any unexpected things just popping up. I always tuck away a little bit for, you know, your your uh, unexpected things like, okay, wow, I'm traveling somewhere and I'm going to need, you know, a couple thousand dollars for flying. Okay. All right, great. Well, there you go. I have it because I've been planning for that. Um, and then that sort of thing is, is taken care of. Um, other than that, yeah, like trying to structure certain days for business management, certain days for art and certain days for development and playing around, let yourself go to a museum, let yourself take a class. I love taking dance classes and things like that. Is, is that related to tattooing? No, but it's good for my back. It's good for my well-being and uh, things like that kind of cross-pollinate into other aspects of my life. Does this make any sense or am I babbling? And I don't think you're babbling at all. I think it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. it's like, I, I like I like structure. I'm, I'm, I'm a person who lines up their cutlery, so, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, there's a difference between structure and maybe being a little obsessive, but uh, I also I do the same. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I fold my I fold my underwear a certain way. <laughs> I don't do that. Um, <laughs> so, do you have any official art training behind you? Um, through the years, like when we were younger, Guy and I both took. A lot of like freeform art classes that were sort of satellite things at the Art Institute when we were younger. Um, we took uh, independent classes, uh, 
just like park district classes, non-credit art classes. Neither of us went to art college or anything like that. Any art training that either of us has has been beyond what we got during um, primary and elementary school. Uh, it's just been something that whatever we sought out independently. Um, but I find that the best things to do are the things that I like to host, the, the figure drawing classes. I think figure drawing is something that feeds into every aspect of art. And, and, and that's, I think that anybody who does it gets that and will understand why. You do a lot of uh, figurative tattoos. Um, you think, I mean, I obviously, um, how does f drawing figures come into making better tattoos? T doing live figure drawing, how does that make your tattoos better? Doing live figure drawing is the best possible way to understand space relations, depth, uh, gamut of color, how light affects color, how light affects the shape of the body, and how shadow helps to build mass. Um, Things like foreshortening, they are challenging, incredibly difficult. But if you do enough live figure drawing, you understand instinctively how something like that works. Even if you couldn't write down uh, you know, the, the, the rules that determine you know, functionally how this works, you understand it on an instinctive level. And that sort of understanding of shape and mass and, and, and depth and things like that those rules translate into everything. So, and the, and the figure is one of the hardest things to draw. So, if you're able to to do that, you can take it into other things, to other aspects of your work. So, I've got another question from the chat room. Uh, a couple people. I'm going to kind of combine the question a little. Um, what's the What's the best way for someone to? Um, not in a creepy way, but form a relationship with an artist they want to work with from a distance, um, okay. you know, because you want to you want to kind of get to know the artist you're going to work with. Yeah. Um, what, what's what's the best way to, to go about that relationship and trying to uh, to get to know an artist a little better from a distance? Um. Well, I know that I can only speak for myself here, but um, what works for me is there are plenty of people that would love to just be able to chat and email back and forth and just banter and boy i really wish i had time for that it's an unfortunate thing it's like my own family doesn't hear from me very often um but if somebody is interested in getting work and they they're like yeah you know i have some ideas i'd love to send some things back and forth with you um if the idea is something that i connect with right away then right away I'll, I'll write something back and as soon as I see the message, hey, wow, I love your idea. Did you have any specific images or inspiration or anything like that that, that really drives you for this? And if so, can you send that? And then we'll go back and forth. And there are some people that I go back and forth with for like 10 messages before we actually set anything up. But either during those messages, the connection happens or it doesn't. And most of the time it does. It's like most people that email me are, are awesome, interesting people with great creative ideas. I just wish I had time to get all of them in um, before I die. But uh, <laughs> um, what I find is that most of their ideas are interesting and intriguing and that sparks, like immediately I can see it in my head and then I want to connect with them. I want to make the process move forward. And, and then that connection kind of happens organically. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it all starts with that spark. And if the yeah. spark is there, then it, it just takes a natural, you know, path between tattooer and client. And if that spark is there, then it's going to work. And if it yeah. isn't, it isn't. And <laughs> I haven't, uh, haven't really had too many isn'ts, but... Uh, well, that's good. Yeah, I feel pretty lucky about that. So do you ever move outside of your comfort zone? This is another one from the chat room. Um, I know you like to work in tattoo uh, in uh, pinups and more of a feminine style. Do you ever work outside of that? We just spoke with Paul Booth. Do you ever do anything along his lines? I yeah, I get asked for stuff that that's different and challenging all the time. And um, people that know me will say that that I mean the pinups are easy. It's it's like a comfortable thing for me. But um, I love to try something that's different. I love to be pushed. There are certain things, like if somebody said, hey, I want this big dust till dawn tribal thing down my side, I'd just be like, <laughs> honestly, I, there are people for whom that is zen. I am delighted that those people exist because it means I don't have to do it. 
but pretty much anything else that I can think of, if somebody says, Hey, I've got this, this, this idea and I want you to do, you know, this, I, I did a robots and zombies thing. And, and I was like, okay, cool. So I'm going to do robots and I'll make the robots really cool. You know, Japanese tin toy robots and all the zombies look like Bernie Wrightson drawings. I mean, I love Bernie Wrightson. So that was fun. That was fun for me. It was different. It was not something I would typically think of doing, but somebody gave me this idea and it was a challenge and I had a great time with it. Um, yeah, just throw me something that, that is different and interesting. And, uh, like, again, it's something that, uh, that I'm like, wow, I never would have thought of that, but I love it. Let's do it. And you're going to get a great tattoo. We've got a question in from Brazil. All right, Brazil. Uh, it says, uh, how, how do you approach each tattoo? Do you draw in the morning of the appointment, weeks earlier with more time? And why do you do the way, why do you do it the way that you do? Oh, that's a great question. I know because everybody's got their own approach. Um, I, I started in this business in a really fast paced, high demand street shop where I was doing 10 to 12 tattoos a day, no appointments in advance. I had to be prepared to draw it on the spot right there while the person was breathing down my neck. And so I do really well under pressure, um, but I don't do it the same day. Typically what I'll do is I'll start thinking about it weeks ahead. And uh, I usually have like a series of file folders and I just kind of keep them in the order that the client's coming up and uh, I'll collect reference material or ideas or things that I'll be thinking of be like, oh yeah, you know, let's find an antique ketchup label or something. I'll just Google a search of different images or things and or, or I'll uh, you know, tape flag books and make Xerox copies of pages out of reference books that they have and I'll make a file folder for them. And then uh, like usually the week of the, the project, I'll start doing sketches and over the course of the week I'll refine it. And usually the night before is when I just drive the nail home, do the line drawing and call it done. Well, thanks. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure that Brazil is going to appreciate that. I'm glad. I'm, okay, I'm, hopefully it helps. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of great tattooers in Brazil. So. We've got, uh, we've got one follower of the show, uh, Lucas Luz, that is, he watches just about every show, watches all our webinars and he is a brilliant artist. So hopefully people out there are looking out for him. He's got, uh, awesome. Young guy, and he's coming up. He's going to be doing some amazing work. I'm going to have to look him up. L U C A S L U S L U Z. L U Z. Yep. Okay. Yeah, check him out. I will look him up. So, guy, credit to you uh, for getting him into tattooing. Do you ever? Oh, he's being way too generous. <laughs> I, he does. I mean, I've interviewed him three times, and every time he has he said that you, because of you, is why he tattoos. That is adorable because it's because of him that I tattoo. Really? This is so cute. I could just hurl. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. That's really sweet. Um, well, I was going to ask you if you regret bringing him up into tattooing, but if you didn't realize that it was you, then you can't obviously regret it. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm joking. I, the only thing I regret about guys that I don't get to see him as often as I would like. I miss him. Well, he lives in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, this is true. You know. asked to know where there is no easy way to get there. There is not. I just drove out there not too long ago and it was... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good time once I get there. But you it's... know, right? It's beautiful. It's halcyon. I mean, I understand why you want to live out there in the middle of this bucolic wilderness with the beavers and ponds. and. I know. Miles of trails and it's amazing. Pretty fantastic. But he's out there. Well... Thank you for talking with us. I really uh, appreciate it. Is there anything you've got coming up that you want to tell us about? Any projects in the works? Huh. Well, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, well, let's see. Once the once the shop is is good to go and um, the website is good to go, um, I'm going to start dedicating myself more to this pinup book project that has been on the back burner for the last year and a half. I got the framework of it together. I got a lot of beautiful reference photos from from some great models. Um, it's basically like uh, I want to do for figure drawing what my brother did with reinventing the tattoo. I would like to create a definitive reference guide, something that speaks to everybody, whether you're a visual artist or a tattooer. I'd like to think the two will inform each other really well. Um, something that puts together a master file of image references and gives you a lot of great Q&A and rules to follow on 
great ways to handle figure drawing. Everything from composition to drapery to lighting to hair to costumes to shoes to hand poses, things like that. And um, something that can be regularly updated for people who who buy it, the initial one. I'm thinking I'm probably going to end up doing what so many people do and do a Kickstarter for it because <laughs> it seems to make sense. It's, it's works. It works out. You know, the Kickstarter model works and then get the initial thing going that way. And then I'll probably end up just having Guy do the continuing publication of it. And it will be something I'm, I'm definitely see being a tattoo education thing that will. So, so that, sounds, that sounds great. Um, I recommend uh, giving a phone call to Russ Abbott. If you don't yeah. know him, you should talk to him because he yeah. he was very successful and he's got some great ideas when it comes to Kickstarter. Right, he's using some really good Canadian guys. Does that sound right? I don't know. I don't, uh, maybe his Kickstarter was just so successful. He's yeah. got he 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 screwed up some things on the backside and he's got better advice. And every time I've got a Kickstarter question, I give Russ a call and he definitely has some great advice. That's good to know, yeah, because it's a it's a wild wild west out there. I don't know too much about it. I just know that it's a great tool that if used for good and not for evil, could be very, very helpful. So. Well, I hope you get that done sooner than later. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it, too. I'm looking Thank forward to seeing you. Uh, you're going to be going to the next artist retreat, yes? Yes, I will. I will definitely be there, too. I've been, I've been bragging on it to anybody who would listen. And, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll be just as wonderful and successful next time around. We just got the website up, so people can go to paradiseartistretreat.com and check it out. Hey, right. thank you for talking with us. I'll uh, talk to you soon. All right, Gabe. My best to the ladies. Have a good night. And you too. Take care. Bye-bye.
Hi, my name is Gary Shepard. I'm one of the owners here at Addictive Nature Tattoo Studio. I met with one of the reps at the Pacific Ink and Art Expo out in Hawaii. Um, that's when I actually got hooked up with a lot more of the product. I started using it, being able to actually notice more what it does during the tattoo procedure. We all have noticed the same thing, that the redness and the swelling goes out of the tattoo, that while you're doing color or white, the highlights and the colors actually are a lot brighter after the tattoo procedure. And basically we've all said the same thing, that it's a real good product to use during the tattoo procedure and after. And now, Tattoo Now Network News with Matt O'Brien. Good evening. This is Matt O'Brien. I will be presenting Network News from Tattoo Now. Our first bit of news is Frank Reddy the Third's website was launched. Uh, we had a great time developing this. Aaron has been tattooed by him, so our designer kind of had him dialed in. We wanted to make a website that kind of had a comic book feel and highlighted Frank's work in a staggered way. Um, there isn't a full screenshot here, but you can check it out on frankreadytattoos.com. Uh, if you scroll down, he has a couple of extra features, such as an Instagram feed. Um, it's a really cool new project that we came out with. Um, check it out. The other news that came out was Tommy Helm did a seminar on camouflaging tattoos. Tommy's been uh, doing these cover-ups for a little while. He primarily did 33 in five months? Five months, yeah. So that's a lot of cover-ups, and he's done that multiple times through multiple seasons and in front of millions of people. So uh, his opinion is pretty valued in this manner. Um, what I would discuss with this is that he goes through every step very carefully, and he specifically notes how much money he believes tattooers are losing by not accepting camouflaging or covering up processes. Um, again, I highly recommend checking out the website, tattoonow.com slash webinars. There you can see all the information on it. It's on demand, so you can watch it anytime. The tickets last for 15 days. Uh, if you have any questions with them, you'll be emailing me, and I look forward to catching up about it. So, one of the things that we did for content creation this week was we looked at some hand tattoos from the network. These two are by Nathan Costeco and John Montalvo. Uh, both Two really great guys, and there's a couple of other great hand tattoos in there, so check it out. The other thing that came up was Guy Itchison recently updated his tattoo and art galleries. Uh, really worth a check out. He hasn't updated in a little while, so it's a good amount of content that's in there. Um, he also had his Ask Guy column go up. You can actually email through his website with your questions, and they come up through the magazine. Uh, they're really in-depth. It's, uh, it's a great platform, so I recommend checking out his website to learn more about that. Uh, Giger died, and that sucks uh, a lot, and I'm controlling my voice, but he has had a huge impact in the tattoo community. This is a portrait by Bob Terrell. We recently talked to Paul Booth. Um, I fucking love the Alien movies. Okay, the next thing that came up was Darkwater Tattoos. They've been updating a ton of great content. Um, this here is one of their news items about sketching and going to a final uh, spit-shaded piece of artwork. Uh, I found this really interesting. I'm glad that she shared this, uh, and it's kind of neat for people who are looking to start out and stuff like this, um, and it's a great tutorial. They're uploading a ton of great stuff, and I recommend checking out their website. Jose also did an update about his setup and his um, belief in repetition, which is basically limiting variables so that he can get the most control over his, his tattooing. Uh, it's a great news item, and if you can check out their website, we try and recommend them quite a bit because of the content that they put out. What is next is Tattoo of the Day. And after that? We are gonna announce the sweepstakes winner, and we're gonna talk to Sorn. That's right, here we go.
thanks for getting me high. Oh, Carrie. Oh, thanks for getting me a wicked high. Welcome back to the show. I hope you enjoyed the Tattoo of the Day video. That was a long one. We wanted to give you guys a chance to look at each and every tattoo up and cl close. Um, that's one of our favorite songs by Mike Flood. It's about his brother, Terry. It's pretty awesome. So we're back to announce the winner of the sweepstakes. Woo! So for those that are unfamiliar, uh, you've already seen it. It's the... Uh, it's the Tattoo Artist Dream Sweepstakes. We've been running it for a few months now. And we're giving away amazing prizes from all of our sponsors, um, Waterloo, Neotat, Artisan, uh, and many more, including Workhorse Irons, Eternal Ink. Uh, we're giving away tickets from Tattoo Now, webinars. Check it all out at tattoonow.com slash sweepstakes. But without further ado, we have just chosen a lucky winner. Hopefully you're out there. And the winner is, I wish I had a drum roll sound effect. Ben Sanchez from uh, Meriden, Idaho. Ben, you just won a fully loaded Waterloo workstation. That comes with all kinds of amazing things. If I was more prepared, I would tell you exactly what they are. But in the coming days, you're gonna receive emails from us telling you exactly what they are. And uh, we've got enough stuff to outfit your entire uh, studio booth. It's going to be amazing. You're going to love us forever. For those of you who didn't win, hope is not lost. You've got two more months. We're ending this in July. So get your name on the list. TattooNow.com slash sweepstakes. Enter your stuff. We'll pick a name. It could be you. Coming right up. Soren Gabor. New to the game, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be interesting. He loves Slipknot and I do not. So 
This might be uncomfortable. So on board. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for uh, dealing with all my crap about uh, Slipknot. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're going to feel uncomfortable looking at yourself on the screen while Absolutely. we're talking? Of course. I'm going to have you move over towards me a little. Be centered. We play a little bit loose here sometimes. Uh, this is how it goes. So Soren, where are you from? Cleveland, Ohio. Born and raised? Eh, not, not quite born and raised, but not really. Raised, yeah. How'd you end up in Cleveland? I uh, moved from uh, Europe. You moved from Europe? I did. That's so cool. Little known facts about me. And so now, are you European? I, well, I'm an American citizen, but yeah. Were you born in Europe? Yes, I was. I didn't know that. I should do more research on my people here. So, where are you tattooing right now? I'm currently in North Ridgeville at Eclectic Tattoo. How long have you been tattooing? Well, actually, tell me what year, because we know this video is going to last forever and people are going to want to know. What year did you start tattooing? Full time? Yeah, sure. Full time this last December. See that? We got a real noob on the show. Yeah. How's it feel being so new to the tattoo game? It's a, it's a, it's a crazy learning experience. I mean, I've been around it for... Don McDonald actually took me to my first convention in Hell City when Guy did the interstate, uh, the interstate project with the, all the amazing artists that I've followed forever. So I met Guy, met Marcus, Lenhard. It's just I started talking about getting tattooed there. Um, so I've been around it, went to the first Paradise when you guys did the artist retreat, which was incredible. I highly recommend that to anybody. If you Pretty tattoo, awesome. if you don't tattoo, any kind of art thing, it's awesome. It's definitely one of my so, favorite things of the year. I've been around it, but, you know. What led you to want a tattoo? Do you have an art background? Um, I actually, yeah, I went to art school, um, started in fine art, and then um, about a year and a half in, I realized it was all politics, and I switched to uh, jewelry and metals. So I actually got my degree in crafts. In oh, really? Jewelry and metals, yeah. Got my BFA and then got a regular person job. And, a regular uh, person job? Yeah. What were you doing? Uh, I was doing... Uh, I was doing a bunch of stuff. I was doing like graphic design and like research and development for a company I'd rather not mention. But oh, that's fine. We yeah. don't have to talk about that. Absolutely. Can you get chat room questions? Yeah, I'm see I can see this here. I got it. So the boss man in the back is driving from uh, back seat over there. You might say a back seat driver. But you know, he keeps the questions coming from the chat room, so it's good. We've got a question right here, as you can see. Where do you get your influences for the bio work? Where don't I get my influences from bio work? Um, I mean, at first, I probably did what most people do, and uh, I, I don't know if I want to call it a mistake, but I guess we all develop it probably pretty similarly. Same thing with like music. I'm not going to see the questions. Okay, that's it's fair. A secret over here, man. That's cool. Um, so, I, I mean, make you, nervous. you know, you, you just follow your favorite artists, and then you naturally just tend to kind of not rip them off, but you're influenced by their shapes, by the way they approach things. You know, especially if you're new to it, it's just kind of like a starting point, I feel like. Um, when you do it long enough, I think you develop your own style. And I mean, I'm sure it's still, you can still tell the influences from the other artists, but you, you, you should, I believe, eventually do your own, you know, kind of try to do your own shapes, your own styles, find sure. your own inspiration. Like one of the best things that anyone told me about that was stop looking at tattoo work. Um, don't reference other people's tattoo work for inspiration, you know, kind of find what works for you. And that's a, it was really, really big. So, you know. uh, at the Paradise Tattoo Gathering, I saw you being brutalized by Marcus for days on end. How did that experience uh, affect your life? Um, I've You're, been, you know, half naked in the middle of a convention yeah, for days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, that was the first time I've ever been tattooed at a convention. Really? Yeah. So, Look, can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so at, at that interstate event in '09, um, I met Marcus and I expressed my interest in getting tattooed by him. And it, Don McDonald took me to help him and Steve out like, went with the painting scenario. So I just kind of helped out, volunteered, met everybody, you know. And uh, he, I think he said, email me in 2011. <laughs> so I was like, of course. So I mean, I've, I've waited this long, so I was totally stoked. Flew out to Germany, did the first three days. I think we were close to 20 hours maybe. Um, and then at Paradise, it wasn't that bad just because Paradise is such a high caliber convention. Um, it's mostly just super serious collectors, like people that are really into um, 
very serious tattoos. They respect the work from people. You know, it's not just people coming up trying to get like a name or something. Right. So, I mean, it was cool. Everyone was nice. People would come by and be like, you're still here? What are you doing here? I'm like, yeah, I'll be here for the next three days. <laughs> but it, I mean, it was a great experience. Everyone was super helpful. People would swing by and ask if we need anything. It was crazy. It just turned into this. Yeah, we get a little hippie at the, at the gathering. I mean, it got a little weird at the end because I'm walking around with my pants half taped to my side. Like, it, I know. remember that. Yeah, I think that went weird. My boots wasn't far from Marcus, so yeah. I got to see some. I apologize for uh, <laughs> any uh, <laughs> any loose clothing issues, any wardrobe malfunctions. I'm sure it happened. A couple That's right. You got an amazing piece for Marcus. Uh, I do. It's it's pretty in progress. I think we're like 38 hours in. Uh, we're gonna do another couple of days in September. So, so how is that? How is being tattooed by him influenced, influenced your work? Jeez, uh, uh, being tattooed by him and and Don and like at Interstate, I also met Phil Robertson, so he helped me out a whole great deal. Feels great. Um, they've all helped me out because my apprenticeship was kind of eh, it's a lot of work, not a lot of learning. So it, I mean, I pretty much learned how to tattoo from getting tattooed and from all their help, and just flying out and doing, seeing his entire process was just unbelievable. I mean, you see pictures, so you can kind of get an idea, but I mean, I showed up at like 11 in the morning. We talked about some ideas, like pulled some references. Like I brought some references, of course, because I'm a constant worrier and planner. So I had to take some, I mean, I'm flying across to another continent to get a tattoo that I have no idea what it looks like. It's just- That takes some faith. I mean, if you, if you like a hundred percent of their work, then you know, you're going to be fine. Right. But we talked and I, I went back later. I didn't want to disturb him at dinner. So I'm like, Hey, you know, he told me to swing by later and he hadn't left the basement. <laughs> uh, he designed all day, which was just crazy. So he got to see his process and like just by watching him do it, I mean, he shared a lot of, you know, kind of insight, helped me out. I mean, they, you know, if they see that you're kind of interested. So you're relatively new to tattooing. Uh, you're doing a guest spot at Off the Map. You're uh, on Off the Map Live. We've, uh, you've gotten tattooed by... Uh, <laughs> Breathing intensifies. <laughs> <laughs> Matt O'Brien, our engineer, and also host of Tattoo Now Network News. Hope you like the new intro. Um, how do you? Um, some people might wonder why, how you got here. Um, do you? Th I've seen you do a lot of volunteering, and uh, you're just around. Your face is there. You're helping out. Do you think that kind of stuff is important to get you farther in tattooing, not just tattooing? Absolutely. Um, well, uh, a few people have actually kind of the guest spot has not been negative, but they weren't too happy when they found out how little I've been tattooing and I was doing the guest spot here. Um, Haters. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Like, I feel like some people just think like, oh, they just like randomly just pick this guy and we're like, hey, here you go, like do a guest spot. But I mean, like, I've been going to all the conventions, you know, like taking seminars, volunteer my time. Um, you know, it, it wasn't like without dues or... Sure. It, it doesn't just happen, I guess. I mean, I was pretty shocked when I was invited out, for sure. But, um, you know, I put my time in. Like, I'm comfortable painting, which I still have a long way to go on that. But I saw you, you know, painting in Hell City to, this year? Yeah, the live painting thing. Actually, uh, I talked to Derb and Chris Dingwell, and we're going to try to do something a little... Something a little different for the live painting thing next year. Oh, yeah? Uh, cool. In Columbus. So I'm going right to keep that under wraps until it actually possibly yeah, happens. Right. But... It's kind of a bio thing. What? Shh. Man. Oh, damn it. Then I won't be able to paint there. It's, no, I'm just kidding. It's an off the map exclusive. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just spent four days here fully booked, which was just an unbelievable experience. Everybody I met here was... Has it been intimidating? Has it been... Uh, I, uh, I mean... Or are you comfortable? It was at first. I mean, I had 10 hour driving of thinking about what I'm going to do when I get here. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I've never been here. So, I mean, obviously it's a busy shop, so... I was pretty sure there's going to be walk-ins and stuff like that, but I didn't anticipate being fully booked. So they did an amazing job, everyone there, the crew, like all the artists. I'm super slow still, so everyone would have to come in late, you know, to kind of kind of shut down. But it was super appreciative. I learned so much in like two days in, just like the way I've been tattooing is just went up just tenfold. It was just insane being surrounded by like incredible artists and just how good they are and just efficient. It's just, it's a huge boost. So we got a question from the chat that says, how many conventions have you been to? I've actually only been to all of the Hell City conventions since 09. And I believe most, if not all, the Paradise 
to make it out to Phoenix? Sense. I have never made it out to Phoenix. I'm trying to next year. It's I, completely different than Columbus. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously a lot of similarities, but it's completely different. Everyone says it's awesome. It's pretty awesome. But I'm getting tattooed in September, so I can't really, can't really swing Phoenix. It's pretty awesome. Maybe you should work harder. <sighs> I'm just kidding, man. So you said your apprenticeship was a lot of work, not a lot of learning. Um, why is that? Why do you think? I, I don't. Uh, no slight to whoever apprenticed you. I don't know. No, like that. absolutely not. Uh, well, the shop I was at was it, there is mostly traditional shop, and nothing against traditional. Before everyone starts getting crazy with them. Soren is an art school kid. Yes, and they hate us. Um, yeah, I mean Phil just kind of brought me on and tried to like help me out and I mean I knew I was never gonna tattoo at that shop and it was like never part of it mm -hmm. um I mean they were cool guys it just it just didn't work out you know I mean sometimes personalities as someone I, I can't remember who and I apologize to who it was I'm sure you remember but uh someone said wherever you apprentice or wherever you start you're probably not gonna wind up being friends with those people really? and I mean they're they were cool dudes it just didn't really work out um so I changed to another shop that didn't work out either really <laughs> You know, <laughs> um, I mean, because I've talked to people who've had apprenticeships and, you know, they got taught so many things. Like right now where I'm at, um, this girl, Emily, she got apprenticed by uh, another artist who just started there, Costa, and she had a great apprenticeship. Like he taught her how to tattoo. He taught her basics, fundamentals, like everything. It wasn't just clean this and go get me coffee and wash this or whatever. Is that whatever. the experience that you had? That kind of, that yeah, and I mean, that kind of experience? Yeah, and I'm not saying that that's not an important part because it was good to learn all those things, but it would have been great to actually learn about tattooing. I mean, here and there they would teach me some things, but, you know, it was never going to be like a like a full-on. And I knew what it was when I signed up for it. Um, but it was a way to get your foot in the door. So that's why, you know, Phil would be like, hey, come to come to Health City volunteer. Derb has been super helpful with that, you know. He's volunteering in the painting room and then eventually he's like, you know, you should paint. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've run into being newer in the, in the tattoo world? I, I, say, I would say a big one is the more traditional, not like necessarily traditional in style, but like the more like old school tattooer mentality and the new one is just, they don't really seem to mix. Where um, do you find yourself? I think there's a whole new generation of people who aren't just like people who tattoo, they're artists who started tattooing, and it seems like there's a little bit of a divide right now. Not not like in a negative way, it's just, you know, there's the, the right, you know, walk in, get some flash, walk out, you can get that anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now these, some of these kids are just like 20, whatever, just doing incredible artwork and um, just pushing it in a whole new level. And people are starting, I think it's kind of slow, but they're starting to realize that, you know, you can't. You can get something besides tribal or like a Superman. We, we, we talked with Paul Booth a little earlier, and he said that a lot of the history and tradition is starting to uh, kind of go away from tattooing. Do you find that to be true? And do you think that's an, a negative thing? I, I agree with everything they said. Um, the the kids that are coming up is like they're they still get apprenticeships. I mean, I I can only speak from people that I know, um, but it's to the point where they they don't know what cleaning tubes is like they don't right. they, i mean some of them are like what's an ultrasonic you know what i mean sure. i mean everything's disposable and not that that's necessarily a bad thing but i i can see why um a lot of the people who like came before us and had to go through all those things i feel like it, it might be important to kind of at least know about it or at least like pay some kind of respect to it because a lot of people are just kind of like hey i see this thing on tv and it's kind of awesome and i'm gonna do it and they just, you know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no thought. There's no, like, motivation. It's just, oh, they seem like they make money not doing a lot. That looks pretty easy. They just sketch for a couple minutes. Like, I've had to break it to people that the shows are edited together. Yeah, that's pretty lame. The, the, the perception of what tattooing is, what TV has done to the perception of tattooing yeah. is, pretty, is pretty lame. What have you got coming up in the future? Where can we see you? Uh, I would hope to come back here again sometime. Um, Sounds like a boss man. I don't it, know. How it is. Uh, most of the clients that came through would like to get some more work from me. So Excellent. hopefully I can make this a semi-regular thing. Um, yeah, we're not far from you? Nah, not, not too far. I mean, what is it? 11, 12 hours? Uh, 10, 11. 10, 11. That's not bad. That's not too bad. 
It's not bad at all. It's, it's not like you're working with a guy 23 hours away. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I just like to come back at some point, just, you know, continue to build up a clientele back home over here. Um, I'll still be doing the Hell City Columbus every year. I'd like to go out to the Phoenix one sometime. I'm going to go to Jeff's shop for the first time. Oh, so right on. that'll be cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, before that. we say goodbye, uh, Lucas has one more question for you. Lucas is, uh, like I said earlier, one of our we've most cha- dedicated, We've chatted multiple times. Most dedicated followers uh, in Brazil. You, uh, he says you do a lot of digital collabs. I'm pretty sure you're working on one with him. I possibly. am, and I suck because I have not worked on it too oh, much. Oh, is this a guilt question, Lucas? Yeah, it might be. <laughs> huh? I've apologized multiple times, and he said it's cool. Well, he's, he wants to know, why do you think it's important to work on collabs uh, like this? Um... When you work with other people, you get a different approach than you, you normally would do. The same thing with like doing the live paint stuff or even coming to the shop. Um, you know, like I see the artists that I usually work with and I know how they work, I know how I work, but that may not necessarily be the best way to work. Um, you, you learn new things, you learn new techniques, you learn a new approach, you could learn literally anything from anybody. So, I mean, doing the collabs, you know, you might think that it's gonna go this way or you have an idea of how you work. I, I did a collab with uh, my friend Doug from Pittsburgh, and um, you know, had we done it separately, obviously I would do it my style, he would do his style, but like combined, we, you just, you learn new things and you, you learn problem solving and you learn new approaches. Did you ever get a piece back and you're like, fuck, they fucked it up. Damn it, I was hoping for <laughs> something else and they fucked it up. And then that gives you a challenge to try to work around something that you might not have thought about. Um, I wouldn't say that it would ever get fucked up in any sort of way. I think they could take in a direction that you wouldn't expect, Mm -hmm. and that's good. You want to push yourself. You you don't always want to be comfortable. Um, Maybe what they came up with was way better than what you could come up with. Um, I mean, you never know. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for talking. Absolutely. With you, thank it's you. good to have you on the show. Despite my musical taste, I apologize. Yeah, fun. And to you out there, thank you for joining us on Off The Map Live. Uh, it's been fun being with you, talking with Paul Booth and Aperson and Soren Gabor here. Uh, I hope you like the new Tattoo Now Network news segment intro. I made it myself just to try to embarrass Matt O'Brien, and I think I might have. Um, make sure you check out our podcast available on the iTunes store go to our YouTube channel subscribe and comment we want to hear from you we'll see you on next week's show with Conan Lee and the always amazing Carlos Torres so uh, we'll see you then and for now good night thank you for being with us